this is a talk about possibilities. What is possible, right? Although when most people look at this question, they start thinking of how they can do it. So before I get there, right? How about we also talk about making things possible? Because not everything is possible today, right? Can we see the same stuff differently? What does it take to see the same stuff differently? OK. So like I said, right, most people, when they think of possibilities, and then they think of, well, I am the one who's thinking. So they think, can I do this? OK. And then they think, what all can I do? Because you know that has to be a set. And then you figure out whether or not can I do this, whether the this is part of your set of things you can do. OK. Well, that doesn't always help, right? So then certain people who are slightly more evolved, right, who are more risk takers, think, OK, can I learn to do this? Right? There's already one step in the right direction. So I can't do it today. Can I learn to do this? OK. What if no one you know has ever done it before? Right? That then becomes a mental block, which you need to somehow get rid of. OK, so I'll give an example. When I came back to India after seven years in the US, and my family is in Delhi, so I lived with them first, I was scared. And they were scared. And suddenly, the curfew started. And you know, I'm used to kind of living independently. And suddenly, you come back to your house. And your moment are like, be, in, you know, be back by 10 PM max, uh, because it's Delhi and safety and everything, right? So, so this is the question I asked myself. Um, and I figured out I should start doing Krav Maga, which is an Israeli combat martial art, which really hurts other people if you learn to do it well, right? OK, guess what? The first answer from my parents was, Ye pagal ho gai hai. so are you crazy, right? Or she's become too American. And, and I wondered why trying to do something crazy meant, well, she just came back, she's become too American, she's gone mad, right? Anyway, when I finally was able to, so three months in, Let's just say the guys in that class did not like me, and they got hurt a lot, right? So anyway, but even today, right, unless I actually start showing it to people in action, they don't believe it. And the very first thing they want to tell you is, but that's not possible, and you're tiny. What if no one has done it before, right? So at least, you know, for the, for the fighting thing, you can look at a whole bunch of role models. You can Google people, and you're like, well, OK, okay, huh? someone in the world has done it. Not too bad, right? What if no one's ever done it? So I'll give a few examples, right? You know, how you should start thinking through it and recognize those mental blocks and then try and remove them. OK, so and also, right, I think the pattern you're going to see is I believe while self-learning people, while people who want to learn are already better than people who think that's it and their current status quo is what they're always going to be, don't try to learn so much that you forget to lead, right? Because again, what if you want to do something which no one's ever done? So I won't go into the story, but um, I was 14. I was in 11th grade. And I was in the science stream. And suddenly, after a year, when I had come to 12th, I wanted to drop chemistry because I wanted to take up another subject. Let's just say that's possible. And no one's told anybody, and it's been 10 years already since I did that. Right? So as a 14-year-old, you can, you know, if, you, if you're annoyed enough, you can go through CVSE's rules. Um, and you can really figure out that the whole stream concept and these boxes and constraints are what are imposed by us on ourselves. Right? It's, not, it's nothing integral to the system. Right? So OK. Here's another thing, right? So again, and I'll talk about this in two contexts, yourself your life, and let's say so I'm running a startup as well, a startup's life and how it plans and problem solves and dreams and what it sets as the bar for itself. So let's say there's a status quo, right? And a whole bunch of the other colors are other people or other startups. It's very analogous. And there are different places. If you start benchmarking yourself to them, if you think by analogy, you want to be where the dotted line is. And you're always stuck in a rat race, right? Just be free of that, right? Because there is a possibility of being so much more beyond. And again, later we'll cover what makes us do that. But the point is, if you can think of there, don't limit, don't self-limit, because there's no point in that. OK. Um, so this was a question we had to ask, right? Can we change banking? Um, and to be very honest, the first time my co-founder and I had coffee, he was the one, again, credit to him, who, who thought of this question. And I was like, 
are you retarded? <laughs> right? This is just, it's too big a word. It's too big a sector. It's too big a system. It's too ingrained a system. You don't just start and say, can I change banking? Although, again, the question asked is half the battle won. You'll figure out the answers. Right? So I'll walk you through again. Ask the question, then what? OK. So we had to say, OK, can we change lending? Right? Now, again, if you believe the PR hype in the sector, it's all about, well, you need to risk assess people. Because banks and traditional financial institutions can't even begin to think of risk assessing the 1.3 billion minus 3 crore, because they're too different. And they need different mechanisms to solve that problem for them. OK. And again, you know, using buzzwords, someone will say, OK, well, you could use technology. You could use data. And both have limitations if you only think of that as your solution space. So second thing, right? Widen your solution space massively. Do that divergent thinking, right? You'll converge later. You'll focus later. But at the start, don't limit anything. So widen your solution space. We can use product. We can use partnerships. We can do collections differently. We can do acquisition differently. We can reimagine what the word lending means. It no longer means a home loan, car loan, unsecured personal loan, gold loan. Oh, yeah. Right? It means a redistribution of wealth between two parties. One had more, one had less. One you added value to. The other person got interest. It's a win-win. It's the reason countries grow their GDP. That's what lending is. In Bangalore, the fact that we need rent deposits for 10 months, security deposits on rentals for 10 months. And everybody I know is always scrambling around to gather that money. Could that be a loan product? Right? Can you design things because you're customer first, and you're simply looking at when do people need money, and what's the easiest way to, if they deserve it, get them that? Right? And then, of course, collect it back. OK. See the problem differently. That's another one, right? What do I mean by that? I had to start recruiting for the startup, right? Guess what? Lending is so similar to recruiting. Quick show of hands as to who sees that, or who can um, kind of sort of see the equivalency. OK, wonderful. In both, you're betting on people. You're evaluating them. You're figuring out how to evaluate them faster. They could be an idiot on paper and a wonderful person, or vice versa. They could turn out to be a bad investment and a bad debt. And you're doing it repeatedly, and you get better with practice, and there's a feedback loop. So yes, there is data involved, their resume, and what you ask them through written answers. But that's not enough, because the human touch is needed. And you still figure out every single day what's the best way of combining both to do it better every day. right? You're betting on people. You're betting on their potential. Guess what? In recruiting, you are betting not just on their past, but on their future. You are betting on what they can change and evolve to be at your company. Not just, OK, TK, you've done this before. Do the exact same shit here. Be boring. right? You're figuring out if you can be their first director for a different genre, or their first director period if they're freshers. Right? You don't want to be the 20th director who gives them the same rom-com movie just because they got stuck in that rut. And that's the similarity over here, right? OK. By the way, we didn't stop there, right? So OK, can we change recruiting in India? You're a startup. You have hashtag startup problems. You have no money. And everybody starts telling you, well, this is India. Worst words possible, because people use it in a self-deprecating way, but OK. This is India. People here don't care about ESOPs. People here care about that plus 30% industry hike standard. It's, you know, you're coming from a Series D company. You're coming from an MNC. You're coming to a startup. And you really thought impact would matter. And someone has the audacity to sit in front of you and say plus 30% hike. But industry standard. Right? And you still figure out how on earth to get through. And another thing, right? Our biggest cause of attrition, I'm sorry, parents who tell their children you need MBAs, even though most MBAs are framework schools. And you're going to learn more at a rocket ship startup, which is going to grow 100x in the next two years, than by going and doing an MBA. The amount of parents I have to counsel on the phone. And I can only stop 
30% of the attrition so far, the other 70% still go. Why? Because parents. Right, okay. All right. Here's the thing though, both lending and recruiting, you have to simultaneously do two things. Have this beautiful, unparalleled belief in the beauty of people, in the beauty of the fact that if you just get out of their way and they get out of their own way, they want to learn, they want to be better, they want to evolve, they want to do more and be more in their life. But with that, you have to be massively paranoid. Trust but verify, right? And I actually was better at the first than the second. And I've needed to check myself as well. Because irrespective of all the beauty, people do cheat you and do fraud you and do lie about everything possible. And somehow you're still stuck doing both every single day because the latter life's too cynical. And I'm not signing up for that. And the former, well, you get burnt. And then the world is telling you and waiting every single day just to tell you you were wrong for believing in people in lending or recruiting, right? So you have to do both. Okay. Now, again, the pattern here, right? Why are people thinking 10x? So we covered the first part. Because you can. Because why not? Right? Because life is so much better that way. Because you're evolving every day. But here's the reality, though. Most of us don't have the luxury of a la-la land to go through that problem-solving route. Most of us do it because we're fighting for survival. Why do startups think 10x? Why? Why startups? Because you're fighting for survival. Who among you has climbed a tree? Raise your hands. Oh, damn, wonderful. OK, if a lion was standing in front of you, would you climb a tree which is nearby? Raise your hands. Whoever is not raising your hands right now, I am very concerned, right? Come on, basic survival instinct. We're all born with that. You're fighting for survival. A lion is in front of you, and you climbed a tree. And the second your brain can go there, the second you know that is what you will do, great. You've crossed another mental block already. Why are we a judgmental society? Why are we trying to behavior assess? Why can't you behavior change? Bangal was about behavior change, and yes, they hated it until they got some perspective. But guess what? Just like your body, which is a muscle, the more you inflict on it, the more it grows after pain. Same with your mind. Are you ready for that infliction of pain, though? And are you willing to thank those people who do that for you, right? Adversity can be your biggest strength. Because one day, you keep walking, you keep walking, you keep walking, one day, you will be better, right? You're adding to yourself. You're not doing anybody else a favor. But they are doing one to you. Do you just have the sense to see that? Okay. It is about reframing, right? OK, now, last thing. So there's three buckets, A, B, and C. How many of you have ever been in A? And by the world, I mean really any other person in the world but yourself. Where someone else ever said or showed you that it was possible, and you thought or said it wasn't, ever, even once in your life. OK, exactly, right? So guess what, by the way? So I'm that crazy person who gives people feedback in interviews. Because if they're not going to, if I'm not, I either say yes or I end up giving them feedback, right? 20 extra minutes. Sometimes they, they don't like it, though. OK. Um, so there was a guy who was very bad at one skill where he really wanted to be. And I said, OK, you know what? Go become 100x better in four months. And then let's talk again and keep in touch. So he was in bucket A. Guess what? Bucket A to bucket B is really easy, right? Is it easy or is it not? The world is already saying it's possible. So all you have to do is be like, yeah, out of my comfort zone. Yeah, I'm scared. Yeah, I don't know how to do this. But someone else is saying it. OK, fine. Just move. Just It's, it's right there. Just shift a little bit. OK. All right. So, so finally, after five minutes of convincing, he shifted, right? because I showed him three buckets. Now guess what? B to C is harder. But um, we could take it on our ego, right? OK. So suddenly, you're saying it's possible. Guess what? Your brain already believes it. The second you say it's possible, you've faked your, you've tricked your mind into at least starting to think that it's possible. OK, now what? Now it believes it? At least a little bit? Great. Now enter C. The world is saying it's not possible. So I actually reneged on him. Right? I was like, well, at first I had to convince him, first 15 minutes, you can do this. Here are ways you can do this. Last five minutes, yeah, I don't think you can do it. Right, 100x in four months, that's a very, very big improvement. 
Guess what? Bucket C is entrepreneurship. Your world is saying it's not possible, and you're the one who's taking it on your ego and thinking it is. So can you change every day to become a better version of yourself, to be more built for success? It's not about, I sincerely believe, right, life is not about finding ourselves, even though our generation, the millennial one, thinks that's what life is about. Why don't we create ourselves every single day, right? So given the dichotomy between, should I change, should I be myself? Create a whole new you.